Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. With all due respect to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, I'm perplexed that we continue to ignore the elephant in this room, and that is the failure of this body to hold the Lottery Corporation accountable to its mandate to contribute, as nearly as practical, 35 percent of lottery proceeds into education pursuant to the Education Act passed in 1993. The Georgia Lottery Corporation is a government-owned entity, but is allowed to act as a private corporation. We are quick to want to take over schools when they are floundering and attempt to impinge on the constitutional authority of local school boards when they seem to fall into trouble. But why is there no will to demand more from an entity that, by law, we have authority and a responsibility to control. We've laid off state workers and stripped away much needed benefits from our public employees. And while I applaud the efforts of the governor and the senators who have labored to craft this legislation and its varied amendments, there's no need to engage in the exercise that we've engaged in today. If we simply had the legislative will to rein in the Lottery Corporation and subject them to the get-tough approach that we take with other state entities, 35 percent is the mandated proceeds that the Georgia Lottery Corporation was directed to provide to the Lottery for Education account, which funds the Hope Scholarship. 25.6 percent is all that was delivered last year. 255,000 is the number of Georgia students who are now expected to make up the difference. It's not the economy. It is this body and the body across the hall that has failed our children, simply due to our lack of will to do what's right. Throughout the last 16 years, the Georgia Lottery Corporation contributed 35% only one time in 1995. And since then, their contributions have steadily declined. In 2009, as I said, only 25.6%, according to their reports. Even a senator from across the aisle is on record to state that 30% is a realistic target for Georgia. We simply must have the will to demand it, ladies and gentlemen. Had that 35 percent been reached in 2009, the Education Fund would have received approximately an extra $320 million. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the elephant in the room that everyone seems to be too comfortable in ignoring. That $320 million would far surpass the fund's 2011 expected deficit, which is estimated to be approximately $243 million, according to the Student Finance Commission. Had the recommended mandates of 35 percent been reached every year since the year 2000, that total would be over $2 billion. A senior vice president for, president for the Georgia Lottery Corporation has blamed smaller contribution percentages to the popularity of scratch-off games. When the Hope Scholarship was established, most lotteries existed in the form of the drawing games. And that lottery official has says that with the instant games with a higher payout percentage, has caused the profit margin to decrease. And as prizes consumed a larger percentage of the incoming revenue, the corporation made up the difference with smaller contributions to education. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a, a new toy here. It's an iPad. And yes, Apple just came out with a new version. They put a camera on it. But I bet you won't see a new version with a jump drive on it because that would kill their MacBook sales. So then why would we as a state allow a corporation to present a product 
that competes with this staple product. In 2009, lottery payouts accounted for about 63.2% of its revenues, according to the corporation's reports. The statute only mandates that approximately 45% of those lottery proceeds be mandated in prizes. So why are we as a body, as a General Assembly, allowing this public corporation to remain out of control and not be under the proper oversight of this General Assembly? Where is the oversight? No one seems to be outraged but our students in the gallery, and they have a right to be. And I thank you for your civil disobedience, because that is what will make a difference. Why should these students be forced to take out a loan when officials of the Lottery Corporation are allowed to live lives of luxury on the public coffers? Everyone was outraged in 2004 when the Lottery first doled out bonuses to its staff. Everyone was outraged again in 2007 when they doled out some $3 million in bonuses from a public corporation. Everyone was outraged when the former CEO left the state and she and her lieutenants took about $300,000 in sick leave and vacation leaves from a public corporation. We were all outraged, but what did we do? Not much. We were so outraged that a member of the House of Representatives did introduce legislation to require that the 35% mandate be adhered to. But we, as a General Assembly, failed to take responsive and decisive action. And unfortunately, it appears that today we will miss that target yet again. I was surprised to learn that in addition to the Georgia Lottery Corporation's Board of Directors, there is an oversight committee from the General Assembly. The thing that surprised me most to learn was that chairs from the Appropriations Committee, the Higher Education Committee, and the Education Committee don't seem to sit on that board. It would appear to be those are the individuals with the highest level of expertise who could help steer that corporation in the right direction on behalf of our students and our citizens. With the proper management and oversight, this crisis could have and should have been avoided. We simply could have hit the 30 plus percent mark. A wise man once said that the only bad thing about making, making a mistake is repeating it. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, it's not too late to save hope. It's not too late to save the integrity of this government. And it is not too late to preserve our children's educational future. Let's get back to basics. Let's hold this corporation to its mandate, to its rule of law and educate our students. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well.